Good morning, everybody. Hi, I am Steve Farrell. I am a co-founder of Humanities Team, and I'm here with a dear, dear friend. Oh my gosh, Good Patricia Coda Robles. Hi, and uh, sorry about that echo. Uh, you know, these are live programs. So uh, Jim Gray, who manages these things for us, is, is a brave man, is all I can say. Because it's easy to have a little echo like that. Can you all, can you hear the echo too, Patricia? Okay, there we go. It's shut, shut off now. So uh, let me just, I'm gonna give Patricia a, uh, a proper introduction in a second, but hey, welcome. Thanks for joining me. You're coming in live from, uh, from New Mexico, right? Or no, Phoenix, or no, Tucson. Arizona. Tucson, Arizona. Tucson, Arizona, right, right. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, well, thank you so much for being here, Patricia. Again, just a dear friend. Uh, so I wanna shout out to everybody. Welcome to everybody that's here. I'm gonna wave because in the studio, we can see some of you on camera. Uh, thank you all for being here and on camera. You know, it, uh, this way, Patricia and I, we've got a live audience. We're not just sitting here talking to, uh, you know, video screens. So thank you so much for being here in the green room with us. And all of you out on social media, Era of Peace, Humanities Team, Sign Network with John Raymer, Sign.network. And you can uh, go see the great work they're doing uh, by just Googling them. So uh, welcome to all of you. Thanks for being here. This is a live program. So want to invite you to, if, if you're here in the green room, you can come on screen if you uh, so desire. And in the green room and out on social media, YouTube, Facebook, et cetera, uh, you can also just put your questions or comments in the chat and we'll try and bring as many of those to Patricia as we can during the hour. So uh, now our theme here today is infinite forces that shape our lives. Um, lots of different ways of saying that and uh, Patricia and I are gonna get to quite a few here. Let me uh, introduce her uh, properly. So Patricia Cota Robles is an internationally renowned spiritual teacher and the co-founder and president of the nonprofit educational organization Era of Peace, which sponsors her work in the annual World of Congress of Illumination now in its 36th year. After her 20 year career as a marriage and family counselor, Patricia now shares the vitally important information she receives from the beings of light in the realms of illumined truth. The information Patricia channels from on high is available for free through the Era of Peace website and via social media. Patricia is a truly leading voice in the world's spiritual community and an incredible friend and supporter of Humanities Team. And welcome again, uh, Patricia, so great to have you here with us. Well, it's my pleasure to be here, Steve. Thank you very much. All right, and there, uh, Patricia and I, of course, were just chatting in the green room before we came out live, and there are so many things to get to, friends, <laughs> because uh, one, there are all these programs Patricia's created with a 60 now that are on the, our uh, conscious streaming channel that's global called uh, Humanity Stream Plus. Uh, but where I wanna start before we start looking at some of the programs that she's created with real other esteemed leaders from around the world is to just talk about uh, today's world because Patricia with her nonprofit era of peace and humanities team also a nonprofit boy we are focused on the same thing uh, which is this shift of the ages this great pivot this migration to uh, to conscious living there are different ways that we can talk about this you know where we uh, open our eyes really to a whole new world and a whole new understandings uh, and uh, so let's let's start there Patricia with uh, really the incredible things that happened in 2023 that you talk about that then are creating this momentum cycle into 2024 with awakening, with ascension, and to a whole new way of living on the earth with opening our heart uh, to the love of God and the love of each other. Uh, do you wanna say a word about that as we get started? Yes, I would. You know, Eons ago, really, we had this, we started using our creative faculties of thought and feeling in ways that were not based in love, which ultimately caused our fall from grace. And what the fall from grace was, is that we fell into such dense and discordant frequencies of vibration that we lost the ability to have that open heart and mind telepathic communication with the company of heaven, which was always supposed to be our higher guidance. You know, we weren't supposed to be 
struggling through trial and error, uh, literally weeping and wailing through our valley of tears. We were to have guidance and assistance to help us learn how to become co-creators. And at that time, we knew about the oneness of all life. We knew that all life is interrelated, interconnected, and interdependent. And so for eons of time, our mission of for humanity's evolution on the earth has been striving to reclaim our position in our solar system and our system of worlds to help us catch up with the rest of the solar system that moved ahead uh, before us, you know, and we're the ones that experienced the fall like that. So now what is happening is that we have finally reached that point. And just very simply, there's we belong to greater and greater systems of worlds and planet earth belongs to a system of worlds that is headed by a central sun and that's we have our physical sun of course and the solar logos the representatives of our father mother god from that sun are helios and vesta and helios and vesta belong to a system of grand of uh great central suns and higher and higher. We have Alpha and Omega is our central sun. Then Alpha and Omega belongs to a great central sun known as Eloe and Eloa. And they belong to a great, great central sun known as El and Allah. And that's the highest that we've been able to reach until 2023. And because of myriad activities of light that have happened over the past several decades, we finally reached a frequency of vibration that our system of worlds could be absorbed and ascend into what is known as the Grand Central Sun. That's the system beyond El and Allah. So they have been high vibrating at a frequency that was far beyond our reach. Now we have finally caught up with them. And so what is available to us now is assistance to again have us connect with the beings of light, open our hearts, learn about the oneness of all life, reclaim the knowledge that we used to have beyond anything we've ever been able to experience before. So as we move into 2024, the beings of light say that we have the ability to create miracles and that everything has changed. Yes, it has and is right now. Yeah, this great migration. You know, the whales are migrating south, the geese are migrating south, and humanity is migrating to this whole new way of living that... Um, you often refer to this fifth dimensional crystalline solar earth, really, that is, you know, what we're ascending or migrating to. Do you want to, uh, you know, you've kind of set the stage for that by just taking us through that narrative. But do you want to, you know, this, this whole new earth that we're uh, opening our eyes to and living into, uh, do you want to just say a word about that, Patricia? Yes, we are creating an earth that's... Uh moving our whole solar system. We heard about the shift of the ages and that was, you know, harmonic convergence. That was a 25 year period that lead, led us up to this shift of the ages. And what the shift of the ages, there was a lot of focus on the completion of a cycle with the Mayan calendar, but the beings of light said the shift of the ages is actually a moment in time that happens every so many millions of years when cycles within cycles within cycles throughout the whole of creation dovetail into the rhythmic momentum of our father mother god and our father mother god in breathe the whole of creation up the spiral of evolution to the next octave of our learning experience. And because of our fall from grace eons ago, the rest of our system moved through the fourth dimension. Now it is time and we heard about in with harmonic convergence for the shift of the ages, meaning that the rest of our solar systems and all the suns in Earth's lineage were moving into higher frequencies of the fifth dimension. 
So in that moment, the earth had to ascend not only from the densest frequencies of the distorted third dimension, but we had to raise our vibration to make that shift. And in December 21st and 22nd in uh, 2012, when we aligned, our galaxy aligned with the core of creation, we were breathed through the fourth dimension and prepared to ascend into the initial frequency of the fifth dimension. So when people used to go through near-death experiences at that time, and they talk about moving through the dark tunnel, which is just the sea of negativity around the earth into the light. And then we could see the beings of light and talk to our loved ones. We considered that the heavenly realms. And at the time, that was the fifth dimension. So with the shift of the ages, the fifth dimension, which was what we thought of as the heavenly realms, ascended into the sixth dimension and we are ascending into the fifth dimension. So to do that, we are moving into a higher frequency that's literally considered a crystalline solar frequency of light in that fifth dimension. And to manifest that new heaven and new earth that we heard about in the Bible and various scriptures where we said, there will be no death and dying as we know it, no pain and no suffering, no poverty, no war, all of those things vibrates in this fifth dimensional crystalline energy. So we are co-creating that. And one of the most important things, the beings of light now from our grand central sun are revealing to us is that the advantage of moving into this whole new frequency is that this year, the greatest need of the hour is for us to develop our creativity. Because at the present time, they said, even if we tried to come up with the most glorious new earth, what we would probably describe would be an end of poverty, an end of war, love and compassion, and all of those wonderful things. But they said, no matter how glorious our vision is, we're just barely recapturing what we lost with our fall from grace. And that actually the fifth dimensional is exquisite patterns of colors and music and cosmic tones and sounds and patterns of perfection and expressions of divine love beyond our ability to comprehend at this moment. So we are going to be this year working in order to be able to create, because we're responsible for creating this new earth. That's our purpose and reason for being, using our creative faculties of thought and feeling to co-create the new earth with our Father, Mother, God, is that we have to develop our creativity which means that step by step this year, we're going to be enhancing our senses so that our sense of smell is increased to higher frequencies of exquisite beauty, our sight, our taste, our touch, all of the expressions of our feelings and our senses in addition to our imagination. So we are creating the new earth. And as Steve has talked about and the wonderful programs and things that people are expressing, everybody through the live streaming and through all of our individual work, everyone is tapping into different aspects of how this co-creation and creativity is going to manifest within us. So it's an exquisite time for all of us to pay attention, to go within and pay attention to everything that's brought into our sphere of awareness. And to, this doesn't mean you have to accept everything that you is brought into your awareness. In fact, I always say, I don't want you to ever accept anything just because somebody's told you it's true. But I do want you to be open heart, open mind, listen to it, perceive it as food for thought, see how it resonates in the divinity of your heart and explore 
these wonderful opportunities and this wonderful information that's coming from all of the highest realms of Illumined Truth. Beautiful. Yes, thank you, Patricia. And, um, you know, in my own experience as we are opening ourselves, as we're going through our own personal awakening experience, that um, which is this whole elevated consciousness thing that is happening, is um, our intuitive, you know, and these things you mentioned, taste, touch, sight, uh, sound, um, there is, uh, we're kind of reaching into new realms, you know. Um, it's something I don't even think about, but I just notice, I'll, I'll say, you know. Um, in the stillness when there, there's nobody around and, and you're looking out at nature, um, what, what we can experience is quite different than when I was much younger, you know, and just sitting alone looking out at nature. Um, there's this uh, intuitive, creative, um, these, these, these abilities that just seem to naturally kind of be un unfolding into new possibility. All of these things that you, you just shared. Um, well, let's go to, um, we're going to go to, we've got some video clips we want to bring in. Also, there's an, something experiential uh, that Patricia's going to lead here during the hour. So um, let's go to the first video. This is actually from one of uh, Patricia's programs. It's called Cosmic Forces Shaping a Whole New World. This is with uh, Suzanne Giesman. And here she's talking about uh, how she was called to leave. She was uh, uh, in doing marital therapy uh, and called to this work in a really beautiful way. So here she kind of shares uh, what happened back then this is part of, again, our, as, as we're opening up this Cosmic Forces Shaping a Whole New World uh, Masterclass. This was something that uh, Patricia shared near the beginning of it. Um, this is, this program, and these other programs we're looking at are all on Humanity Stream, again, which is our conscious streaming platform now worldwide. And Patricia's got 60 programs there uh, that are extraordinary. I love, by the way, um, I used to use Roku to watch the programs in my... Uh, bedroom now I like to just put I just open up the app and watch these on my phone because I can be in the living room my bedroom I can be on a plane instead of watching a mindless movie uh, I'll go watch Patricia or somebody one of the uh, these incredible programs just open it up and watch these programs okay here we go let's go take a look at this first video segment and then Patricia and I are going to come back and talk about it As a word of encouragement, I would like to share with you a little about my own personal experience in communicating with the company of heaven. In the 1960s, in the midst of the various upheavals taking place around the world, the company of heaven told me during one of my meditations that it was time to expand the information to the rest of the world that they had been revealing esoterically to a relatively small portion of humanity through the various mystery schools. They said it was time for the sacred knowledge from the realms of illumined truth to now be made tangibly available exoterically to the masses of humanity. The beings of light said this information would be revealed in waves as awakening humanity comprehended it and passed it on to the masses through the various ways and methods of teaching that they would be inspired to initiate. I was asked at the time if I would be willing to transcribe the information the Company of Heaven was sharing with me and to make it available, without exception, to anyone who might be interested. In deep humility and infinite gratitude, I accepted that opportunity. The Company of Heaven made it very clear to me that I was not being given this responsibility because I am more special or more evolved than my fellow sisters and brothers in the family of humanity. Nor do I have special gifts or advanced extrasensory perception 
that is allowing me to receive this information. I am not any more psychic than anyone else, and my communication with the company of heaven is not considered channeling. In fact, I was told that the reason I was being given this responsibility is precisely because I am just like every other person on earth. My mission is to demonstrate to the masses of humanity that communicating with the company of heaven is perfectly normal and tangibly available to each and every one of us right here and right now. Beautiful. Uh, so, and true. So that's, that's the beautiful thing about this moment, <clears throat> this great shift of the ages moment, is there's no special talent. In fact, there's no vertical world at all. It's just a horizontal world here where uh, all of us, you know, and the earth and animal and plant life, we're all uh, part of this divine presence of divinity itself. And um, what a beautiful way of expressing that, Patricia. Yeah, thank you for that. The, the free program that leads into that is, um, is called uh, the Partnering with Universal Beings, okay? And that is with Suzanne Giesman. So Partnering with Universal Beings, if you're, if you're not a stream member. Um, and then the other program that we're going to look at is called The Power of Light, um, The True Power of Light. And that leads into this other program that Patricia created with Matthew Fox and Sister Jenna. So she's got two master classes on the stream platform. The one that is the three with Matthew Fox and Sister Jenna. The other one with Suzanne Giesman. Um, do you want to comment on anything in there in that video clip, Patricia, that we just watched? Well, just reiterating that this is not special talent. See, there have been, because of the fall and because we fell into this patriarchal consciousness, when we closed our heart and the divine feminine, our mother God, was forced to withdraw, we closed our heart because we thought we wouldn't experience so much of the pain of the miscreations we were inadvertently creating that weren't based in love. So we closed our heart and the divine feminine withdrew. And so the masculine then expanded without the balance of our mother God's love. So we created this fragmented and fear-based human ego, you know, and even when we talked about God, we talked about our father God as though, uh, what child in the outer world is ever born without a mother and a father. So it was just that whole distortion. And so we fell into this place where in order to keep us there, the fragmented egos told us that we were worthless sinners and worms in the dust. And we had this feeling of uh, having to go to somebody else to save us or somebody else that was more spiritual than we were. So we really programmed that in. And that's what's caused, you know, the mass uh, challenges of unworthiness and low self-esteem and depression and all of the feeling inadequate to be who we are. So the key factor that's been blazing from the heavenly realm since we started re uh, grasping the ability to communicate. And this information that the beings talked to me about in 1960 literally started flowing through the mental and emotional strata of the earth and through every open door, anyone that was open and receptive to it. But the reality is, is that everyone is open and receptive to it. We just didn't remember that. And we haven't felt worthy enough to even dare to trust, to try to experience that. So now that's our mission now, you know, and the good news is, is that through all these decades since then, the beings of light said that there are literally hundreds of millions of souls that are openly communicating and intuitively receiving guidance from the heavenly realms. And contrary to outer appearances, those who are resisting 
those who are fighting tooth and nail to prevent us from moving forward by creating this gross polarization, this us against them, this feeling of victimization and all of this, anything that's reverberating with that kind of a frequency is the forces of imbalance. And the beings of light said that there are literally hundreds of millions working with the light and hundreds of millions more that are genuinely striving to lead heart-based loving lives. And that the number of people that are resisting to the point of striving to wreak havoc through the consciousness of humanity in the outer world to maintain control and manipulation. The number of souls doing that is a minuscule fraction of the 8 billion souls on this planet. And it's hard to believe that because all we see and hear when we turn on the news is that resistance and that polarization and that us against them consciousness. But that is a minuscule fraction of humanity. And when we start experience through all of the wisdom teachers on the planet, through all of the things that Steve is talking about and through all of the contributions of the live streaming and that we will see that there are hundreds and millions of people teaching love and oneness and the awakening to the divine love of our mother God, which is the foundation of all creation. Our father God's contribution is through the expression of the masculine frequencies of divine will, power, and the um, oneness of that whole first cause of perfection. And our mother God's contribution is comprehensive divine love and reverence for all life. And it is that comprehensive divine love that is the foundation of all creation, which means everything evolved from the frequency of oneness and reverence for all life. So that's what we need to grasp again. And that's what we need to go within and determine. The reality isn't that there's this monumental process that we have to go through to reconnect with our I am presence, our divinity. We just have to make that slight adjustment in our awareness that we already are our I am presence and that divinity. And that's what's going to help us make this quantum shift in what's always been referred to as the twinkling of an eye. And of course, this has gone on for millions of years. So the twinkling of an eye to us may not be literally a blink, but it is an infinitely reduced period of time. And in the fifth dimension, the reason it was saying that in the new heaven and the new earth, time will be no more, because in those that frequency Time and space only exist in the fourth and third dimensional frequencies. So we're moving into this timeless, spaceless place of all creation, which is ours to manifest. And a big part of that is happening this year as we develop our latent senses into new levels of creativity. Yes, it is. And this is why Humanities Team created... Uh, well, actually, why we came into existence over 20 years ago, we then called it Awakening the World of Oneness, it's, which is still what we do. We now talk about making conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040, which is, in conscious living, its basis is oneness. It's, it's the love of God, the love of each other. It's, uh, its basis is all of these beautiful, this beautiful reality that Patricia is sharing. And, and this is why we created this whole uh, humanity stream plus platform is for co to create community and to create a streaming platform where we her hundreds of instructors are coming together as faculty to share what Patricia is sharing here where we're letting go of these notions that we had around who we are and and what uh, humanity's purpose is uh, from growing up that's all Newtonian and Darwinian based I grew up in the Catholic Church and some of the notions they're getting better under Pope Francis, but when I was uh, 
there as an altar boy in the Catholic Church, it was a little different. Uh, so, uh, in fact, the thing that often we hear, Neil Donald Walsh will walk this in as he's sharing these same messages. Patricia was just sharing is, my God, this all sounds too good to be true. And Neil says, well, if God, you know, God, God is sent back in the, uh, in the conversations with God books. Well, if God can't share something too good to be true, who can? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're just uh, coming back and owning our birthright and uh, seeing really what magnificent, you know, that we, we truly are made in the likeness and image of the one, you know, sons and daughters of the Most High, uh, cells in the body of God, the divine, or our scientist friends say universe and cosmos, but even they walk around as preachers and say, boy, you ought to have the, the straightest posture in the world because you are inseparable from the universe. So or we could say you're inseparable from God. And uh, that's a pretty pretty big statement, isn't it? <laughs> so let's go, um, we're gonna go look at another video clip now. Um, this one is from uh, The True Power of Light. Okay, so this is a free program that leads into the program with Michael, uh, oh, Matthew Fox and Sister Jenna. So we'll go look at that and then come back. Um, actually, and before we look at it, I wanna just share something Siobhan in the green room uh, uh, shared this comment. She said, developing our creativity, aligning, aligns with our heart, cosmic forces, and Patricia is the whole reason I signed up for Humanity Stream. So, uh, okay, we've got one of your dear friends that's right here in the green room with us, Patricia, and I think a lot of people, she, Siobhan is speaking for a lot of people. You uh, are just such a beautiful and clear voice when we talk about this pivot to this uh, new way of living on the earth. Okay, let's go look at a video clip and we'll come back. Well, we need to recognize that light is all there is. And every particle and wave of light, every atomic and subatomic frequency of light throughout the whole of creation is a reflection of light from the heart of our Father, Mother, God. And to bring it down to our individual expression, like we're talking about today, knowing that our life force that light that runs through our body, that activates our brain and beats our heart and flows through our acupuncture meridians, the light that actually energizes every cell and organ of our body is our life force. It is our gift of life from our Father, Mother, God. And when someone is in the hospital, we can tape electrodes to people's brains and monitor their heart energy. And we know when we watch the monitors, when somebody's leaving this physical plane through the process that we call death through that transition, we know the monitors are flat and the light is withdrawn. And we can't exist in this physical plane without that gift of light. And so the expanded knowledge that the beings of light are literally reminding us of, because this is something that we have always known through our I am presence, but we just forgot when we fell into such dense frequency that we could no longer hear that inner voice or receive that divine guidance in the same way. The beings of light are telling us and our Father, Mother, God are reflecting to us that as that light that flows forth from the heart of God, that is always perfect and vibrating with the full divine potential of God, not one electron ever comes forth from the heart of God that's less than infinite perfection, which is oneness and divine love and reverence for life. That light flows through our crown chakra at the top of our head into the divinity within our heart flame. And when it reaches the divinity in our heart flame, it is stamped with our individual electronic light pattern. Then at that point, through our I am presence and through our free will choices and our creative faculties of thought and feeling, we send that light forth through our thoughts, words, actions, and feelings. And when we were fully connected and are fully connected with our I am presence, we know that that light should be qualified and is qualified 
with love and harmony and reverence for life. Boy, you just, uh, these, these video clips, and you here live, Patricia, just keep bringing it back to this beautiful, uh, true reality, right? Um, we, um, one of the things in the humanities team we talk about now is, the, we call it the Galileo moment, because uh, in Galileo's time there in the early 1600s, our, our, our reality was, well, the earth, you know, is the center of the universe, right? So everybody, that was, this was our, uh, our reality, our truth that the earth was the center of the universe, but it wasn't. And Galileo, with his research, said, you know, we, we are not the center of the universe. We're in a solar system revolving around the sun with other planets, and, and we're not, it's not even at the center of the universe, you know. It's out at the edge of the universe. Uh, and the world changed because of the one, one man that uh, shared this. Uh, he was under house arrest to the end of his life, so uh, he, he paid a price. Now, likewise, today, uh, we walk around with the same false reality of a separated self. Uh, you know, this is why Einstein so many years ago said, the greatest illusion in the world, it's the illusion of separation. Uh, and of course, there are many scientists now uh, that are, have made it their life work to share this, that there's this optical delusion, as Einstein called it, we're, we're not separate at all. That quantum physics, of course, is walking this end, that, that all of life is deeply interrelated, interconnected, and interdependent. And that we're all actually an emanation of, of the one, uh, which you could call source. We, we call the divine in humanity's team. Sons and daughters of the Most High. And uh, with this world that uh, Patricia's putting into words, it's so beautiful. So it's really a matter then of kind of, just like in Galileo's time, pushing aside a false reality. It's just not true, this, this false belief of separated self and living into ultimate reality uh, where we see this deeply connected world and uh, at its center, its basis, uh, which we're all emanations of, is the divine herself. So um, yeah, that was, that was beautiful, Patricia, that segment. And uh, this program with uh, Michael Fox and, I'm sorry, I keep saying Michael Matthew Fox and Sister Jenna, what a terrific program. And then you created this other program uh, with Suzanne Giesman that is called Partnering with Universal Beings. Uh, which is another extraordinary program. You created that last year. Um, let's go take a look at uh, this. This is actually Suzanne, who's the partner with Patricia in the program. Uh, they both put beautiful words to this whole, uh, what we're calling partnering with universal beings. Uh, and there's a, so there's a little clip of Suzanne, then we're gonna come back, Patricia and I, to talk about it. Here we go. There's no hierarchy here, even with those we connect with. They just want us to share the messages of love and connection. And the beings who I communicate with are also beings of light, but so are we here in our bodies. And I actually couldn't tell you their names. Sometimes I'm able to identify a few of them, but the wisdom that comes from them is so clearly beyond anything that I could access that I've come to trust them. And it's my greatest honor to share with others that we all have access to this wisdom because we're all souls. I didn't know this during my naval career. And what I love and what I've been taught by my, my team of light beings is that each of us can reach a specific segment of humanity with our own uh, qualities that we bring to the table. And my left brain background, wearing that uniform for 20 years, seems now to be attracting those who wouldn't normally turn to higher guidance. And I love that. I'm able to reach those who are floundering around a bit like I used to and show them that there is another way to face our day-to-day -day lives. And that's to realize that we are part of something so much greater and that each of us can make a difference in our own way by tuning in to this team of helpers that's available to everyone. I would be lost if I didn't sit each day now and connect. It's so easy to get caught up in the drama. I know that, that so many people who are listening right now know what it's like to feel only human, but connecting with those who have been human and are now higher beings show us that we are so much more than just these physical bodies. So it's my greatest joy now to 
to have turned up the intuition, to be able to tap in instantly to this higher guidance, to their wisdom for the bigger picture that we don't always get in our limited state here. Okay, beautiful. So, uh, and isn't it interesting? So Patricia in marital counseling, me, a technology entrepreneur, Suzanne in the Navy, uh, and here we are. <laughs> where we said, oh my gosh, you know, there's really much more uh, that we're being called to in this whole world that's unfolding, uh, that we're all putting words to, which is the true reality, ultimate reality that science is saying, yes, it is so. Um, Patricia, do you wanna comment on these things? We've got had two videos here back to back. Yes, I think one of the things that's interesting that's happening now so so prevalently is all the concern about artificial intelligence and everybody being concerned that it's going to outsmart humanity and it's going to take over uh, the world and that kind of thing. And artificial intelligence can be used for good or to create havoc. There's no doubt about that. And there'll be all kinds of things that aren't blazing light but the beings of light have said that the only thing artificial intelligence has been programmed with is what we think we know and because so much of what we think we know is inaccurate just like the oneness of all life and who we are our i am presence is a truly multi-dimensional being and can reach into these higher and higher levels of creativity but what we need to be able to do is then transmit it into our conscious mind and feelings so that we can hold those visions and manifest it. So they said artificial intelligence will never overtake humanity in a negative way because it doesn't have all of the information to even know the truth about our reality. And by the time humanity awakens to the point of having that sacred knowledge, they wouldn't even imagine creating something that would be harmful to humanity or the masses of humanity. So we need to empower and focus on that. Like with ourselves, as Suzanne is saying, and as everybody is saying, this isn't this monumental project, you know, I mean, we've heard things from yogis and things like that, that it will take seven times, 70 lifetimes to be able to connect with our God self and through, through, you know, eight hours a day of meditation and all of these very tedious things. And the beings of light have said the reality is that it is not a monumental task to connect with the beings of light or understand the magnitude of who we really are. It's a slight adjustment in our awareness, just recognizing that we are divine, that we are an aspect of God. And a problem is, I think the majority of the world religions actually program into us, they call us sons and daughters of God, but they say for us to say, I am that I am, or I am Christ conscious, or I am a being of light, they feel is blasphemous that we're trying to say we are God and and the reality is we are an aspect of God and we are divine beings and our whole purpose and reason for being is to learn how to become co-creators of perfection with our Father, Mother, God. Because we had the free will, we also had the choice to create thoughts and feelings that weren't based in love, and that's what caused our fall. But we have absolutely everything that our Father, Mother, God have is encoded within the divinity of our heart flame through our I am presence. Yes, and there's great humility in this. Yeah, the last thing we would ever do is walk around pounding our chest or something because uh, we're just channels. We become expressions of of the one, of the divine. Um, just letting that pure love, that light, that uh, beautiful expression, that service, that caring uh, come through. And uh, so as we're going through this whole elevated consciousness, uh, my own personal experience in talking to others is uh, it's a very there's a great deal of humility because we're just we're just expressions of the one, you know, just letting the one uh, shine through us with this beautiful light that you you put these extraordinary words to, Patricia. 
uh, which is it's our birthright. It's actually why we were born into the world, especially now, to be part of this great shift where we move away from these understandings that were marginalized and, uh, and created uh, disempowered ways of living that are truly, uh, you know, just it, it's not, the invitation is so much bigger and better than that. So that's, of course, what uh, this whole conscious living thing is about and Patricia's work and our work. Uh, let me bring in a few comments. So Ethan, who's in the green room, was saying, I've been faithfully watching Patricia and Suzanne's Cosmic Forces modules as a Stream Plus member, and they are fascinating, highly recommended. Okay, Ethan, thank you. That is a fantastic program, uh, this Cosmic Forces Shaping a Whole New World Masterclass with uh, Patricia and Suzanne. Uh, and then Fred says, along with our belief of separation, we have a culture of competition. How do we move to a culture of cooperation? Uh, he's in the green room. Uh, Patricia, so Fred is wondering, how, how do we move to a culture of cooperation? Well, we need to move away from this consciousness of separation. And rather than doing battle with all of those beliefs of us against them and that kind of thing, we have to transcend it. One of my favorite quotes from Buckminster Fuller is that in order to create a new paradigm, you don't change the existing paradigm. You create a new one and make the old one obsolete. And that's exactly what we're doing. We have to transcend. So just like with what's going on this year, and I just wrote a vlog about that, that one of the critical factors of what's happening on the earth this year is through our governments and through our election systems and those kinds of things. And the beings of light for us to move into that place that you're talking about, about cooperation is to really get to a place where we trust and allow our I am presence to take command. And moving into this whole new frequency of the grand central sun, the beings of light from that frequency that were previously prior to December 21st, 2023, were far beyond our vibrational reach. And now we have access to. These beings are working with manifesting our creativity through higher senses. And we will be developing what they refer to as uh, divine government globally each individual country having their own unique aspects, but all of them reflecting a government of the I am presence, by the I am presence, and for the I am presence, which means that the divinity within each soul will be governing and working toward the highest good for all concerned, which is the way our I am presence always works. Never does it have an us against them consciousness. Never have, does it have a way of harming one part of life to express another part of life. It is always creating win-win situations, cooperation moving toward the highest good for all concerned. So to answer your question, the way that's going to happen is for us to co-create it by transcending what's happening in the lower consciousness of doing battle, us against them, victim consciousness, all of those kinds of things. So we just need to raise above it. Those discordant frequencies cannot exist in the higher fifth dimensional frequencies of the new heaven and the new earth. They, if anything, would try to respond in that way that is in a higher vibration, they would simply be dropped to a lower vibration. They wouldn't contaminate that higher vibration. So we're going to co-create it, is the answer. Yes, we are. Yeah, and just to underscore a few things here, um, you know, this is really what oneness means. So, uh, I mean, we're... we're we all have a body. So um, imagine, you know, the cells in our body wanting to compete, you know, and not cooperate. Uh, we're, this is what one, there is actually no separation is the foundation of all of this, no separation at all. And we know from our friends who are mediums, uh, boy, you know, in the heavenly realm, if we don't want to take the time to get it and understand it and live into it here in this physical realm, just wait. 
because we know from all of our friends near-death experience, mediums, uh, it, that's the whole container is this deep foundational oneness, you know, where we, we can't, how could can we compete, you know, <laughs> compete against ourselves? Because we're living in our bigger self is kind of a way we can look at it. Um, so, and of course, it's all cooperation, just as a body with right, red blood cells and white blood cells and organs, it's all deep cooperation. Uh, so we're just opening our eyes to these new understandings and living into them, which is this beautiful cooperation uh, and so much more. So uh, now somebody is watching live from Uganda. So Western Uganda, how neat is that? Uh, Nuwagaba, uh, I won't try and pronounce the full name, uh, but he's watching from Western Uganda and he says, I like humanities team. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you for that. Wonderful. Uh, and uh, and he, he, he said Stephen Patricia, so he's clearly uh, grateful that you're our guest here today, Patricia. Uh, um, okay, so let's, um, Let's go into, do we have time to, to do an, an, a brief experiential thing? We've got about uh, eight minutes left, Patricia. I think so. I think the one that I have uh, been guided to share today is, it won't be any longer than that. And this is an activity of life. The, we, the beings of light, we went through a very powerful eclipse series in October. And that was right before we were able to make this tremendous shift into the full embrace of our grand central sun. And with that shift, the earth caught up with the rest of our solar system. So we are now in the frequency and united. That's why we were able to move into the system of our grand central sun. So the momentum of light that needed to be secured through every heart flame before we made that shift was the consciousness of the oneness of all life. And that's what that eclipse series in October prepared us for. So this is the sharing uh, that our Father, Mother, God are asking us to experience today as they sound a cosmic tone reminding us of the reality of the divine feminine frequencies of our Mother God's comprehensive divine love, which will amplify our comprehension of the oneness of all life. Just breathing in deeply and going within to the divinity of your heart flame, closing your eyes and listening to these words. Today, our Father, Mother God are reiterating to us the critical facet of our collective mission in 2024. Our godparents are asking us to once again contemplate the reality of our Mother God's comprehensive divine love. As we listen to this profound truth, the beings of light from our grand central sun are joining with the I am presence of every son and daughter of God abiding on earth. Together, we will integrate the highest possible comprehension of our Mother God's love into the heart flames and conscious minds of ourselves and every person. This activity of light will assist every person on earth even the most recalcitrant and asleep sons and daughters of God. Our selfless divine intentions in this holy endeavor will help the I am presence of every person on earth to amplify within them the knowing that we are one. Now, Within the silence of every person's heart flame, our Father, Mother, God are sounding a cosmic tone with the divine intent of awakening within each one of us the knowing that we are one and there is no separation. This sacred and holy day, our Father, Mother, God are asking awakening humanity to assist with this holy endeavor by intensifying our efforts to hold our sisters and brothers in the family of humanity 
within the full embrace of our Mother God's divine love. Outer world appearances and painful life experiences have caused many people to become cynical about love and the concept of the oneness of all life. They think this kind of unconditional love is unrealistic and superficial. So today, during this critical stage of our ascension process, our Father, Mother, God want to remind humanity of an important truth that they shared with us when our Mother God was finally able to return to Earth and reclaim her position within the divinity of every person's heart flame. Please go within to the divinity of your heart and contemplate these words from our Father, Mother, God within the flame of illumined truth. So much has been written about love that it has almost become a platitude. But the comprehensive divine love of our Mother God is the mightiest force in the universe. It is the vibration from which we were born out of the heart of God. And it is the vibration through which we must now evolve and ascend back into the heart of God. The love of our Mother God has no bonds, no barriers, no conditions. Within the infinite power of our Mother God's love, there is no pain or sorrow, no lack or limitation. Her love contains within its essence the full potential to rise above all human conditions, all self-inflicted suffering, and all manner of chaos, confusion, hopelessness, and despair. Our Mother God's love heals the illusion of separation. It rejuvenates, revitalizes, and makes whole all that it embraces. It is the single greatest source of forgiveness, and it reverberates with the full gathered momentum of our eternal freedom in the light. Our Mother God's love is the foundation of all creation. It is the indivisible, unchanging ecstasy that allows us to know love in all things. When we experience the love of our Mother God, we understand that we are all one. We know that every particle and wave of life is interconnected, interdependent, and interrelated. Whether we are a magnificent sun, a person, or a blade of grass, we are united in the body of our Father Mother God by the all-encompassing, cohesive light of our Mother God's comprehensive divine love. As our Mother God reclaims this earth and once again anoints humanity with her infinite love, we are beginning to experience a deep reverence for all life. Our Mother God's love is now pulsating within the core of our beings. It is not outside of us. We no longer need to seek the divine feminine from afar. We need to merely accept that our Mother God has returned and that she is now abiding within every person's heart flame. Her love is pulsating within the silent rhythm of every heartbeat, every breath. It is the universal language now speaking to all humanity through our gift of life. As we take the time to listen in the silence of our heart, we hear the tones and whisperings of our Mother God's love, inspired by the wonders of nature and the music of the spheres. Our Mother God is now reestablishing her covenant 
of divine love with the children of earth, which will enhance our ability to once and for all accept the gift of God's eternal peace and infinite abundance. Through this covenant, the supply of all good things will forever and ever flood into the hearts and use of the sons and daughters of God. The glory of God's eternal peace and infinite abundance will be a manifest reality, not only in this moment, but far beyond the earth and time into eternity. And so it is. And so it is. <clears throat> Beautiful. Wow. Uh, really, that is a reality to live into, isn't it? Really stunning. Patricia, thank you. And uh, I'll share a comment as we close. Ethan <clears throat> came back to say, uh, Patricia, I love how you say Father, Mother, God as the Trinity instead of the strict religious order of two male influences and a Holy Spirit doesn't, uh, it doesn't ever make a bit of sense. So, uh, very nice. And I know you're, you're following these, uh, just these inspirations uh, that are coming through here. So, uh, Patricia, thank you so much with Era of Peace, Patricia Cota Robles, and uh, just a dear friend. Uh, what a, I told you the hour would go fast, and it did. <laughs> We're already to the other end. Uh, so nice to be with you. Thank you for your really great, great work out in the world. And, um, and again, viewers, if you're not part of Stream, I shared a number of free programs. Go check out those free programs. Uh, you can also you can find all the free programs on humanitiesteam.org. In the top left, you pull down the program uh, navigation, and you'll see free programs. You'll find Patricia's programs there. Uh, and if you're members of Humanity Stream Plus, oh my gosh, don't. If you missed uh, these programs, which by the way, I shared the two master classes, but I don't think I shared uh, the bigger picture. So in addition to her two master classes, she has these 15 minute videos uh, that are there called the bigger picture, which are extraordinary. So if you're Humanity Stream Plus members, check them out. Don't miss this uh, incredible wisdom at this time of the great shift of the ages. You'll be, you'll be glad you uh, went and checked them out. Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, love and peace and blessings to you. And um, you know, as we know, we're not just talking heads. Our work is about all of us living into it. That's we're we're here to invite, <laughs> inviting us all to live into the great shift of the ages because that's how it happens, right? Is this tipping point is all of us together. So uh, let's let's stretch into it even further. Uh, certainly, uh, Patricia's given us a lot of uh, wisdom here. Uh, a lot of inspiration to do that. So let's, let's go do it. Thanks, everybody. Love and peace and blessings. Have a great day. <laughs>